Um, well, basically, uh, my, my project is uh, called Distributed Acoustic Sensing and Volcano Seismology. And basically, our idea is to uh, understand nonlinear processes that are happening in the ground by using the distributed acoustic sensing and other instruments that are deployed in the field. And afterwards, then we characterize this. Uh, the idea is to analyze and to attempt uh, to model the behavior of this rock response and also have aims from uh, laboratory observations to improve our time assessment dependent on natural hazards and, re and also related to mat material failure and the ground response. Um, so basically, um, we are just uh, set it in, yes, we are uh, set it right here in the island of Sicily in Italy. Um, and you can see here that this is uh, Mount Edna, which I think is, I don't know if you already know it, it's very active in these days. Um, you can see here uh, five principal craters uh, from Mount, Mount, Mount Edna. And over here, when there is an observatory or from the INGV, uh, Instituto Nacional de Vulcanología y Geofísica, I think I said it correctly, I, well, I don't know. Um, and from here in the observatory, we have a telecom cable, uh, which is uh, deployed in a near flat surface. Uh, you can see here that this scale is of uh, 10 meters. Um, and besides that, we have deployed um, broadband seismom seismometers around uh, this array. And also we have infrasound stations across uh, certain parts of the telecom cable. And these are some fractures that are in the area. Yes. Um, so then um, you can see here an infrared camera from the INGV observatory uh, pointing towards uh, Mount Edna. And in some seconds, yeah, we just saw a um, little explosion. But even these little explosions are able then to produce um, pressure waves that propagates in the air and also seismic waves which are gonna propagate even faster on the ground. When they arrive to the seismometer, the infrasound and the fiber optic cable, they look like this. So here uh, we have one of the seismometers in the vertical component that shows the arrival of the seismic wave uh, first and afterwards they can show a little bit of the um, infrasound. And you can see it also right here uh, where it shows uh, the arrival of the pressure wave. And over here in the fiber, uh, we see a little bit of sensibility to this uh, first arrival of seismic, seismic waves. However, we see a ground, it seems that it's able to capture a ground response uh, from the pressure wave, and you can see it here by a uh, increase in amplitude and also in high, uh, is high frequency. Um, so then if we took um, the peak-to-peak -peak, uh, amplitude in all the infra in the infrasound stations of uh, pressure wave and then we try to compute it against uh, strain rate amplitudes from the DAS, uh, we see uh, this distribution. And so far uh, we can see that for even different infrasound amplitudes we just see different uh, strain rate amplitudes uh, when they are compared to the dust. However, then if we derivate the signal of the infrasound and we obtain uh, the pressure rate, now what we are seeing is that there are some scatterings, that, uh, some points scattered that they try to go outside of a, of a linear tendency. So it means that now we are seeing actually a non-linear, a possible non-linear behavior. Um, so basically then uh, we tried to do this, uh, the same for all the channels across the cable in order uh, to see how this nonlinearity uh, behaves uh, along the cable and also how it is related to uh, the structures that are. And we can see, for example, if we take one of the uh, events one of the events in the part when we say that it's non, uh, kind of non-linear, 
we take this one and we also trace it, uh, the same event uh, towards uh, the other channels of the cable, then what we uh, see is something like this. And we see that uh, it seems uh, that the strain rate amplitude for a nonlinear ground response is related also to the surface. So basically the, um, the pressure wave propagates uh, and then it causes a resonance in the scoria layer where um, the cable is buried. And you can see that in some of them, uh, the amplitude increases, which is also related to certain structures as the fracture zones. And the thickness of the scoria layer. Uh, so now um, we have uh, seen this, but there is still uh, a lot of more questions to answer. Um, so for example, uh, if you look uh, in the broadband spectrum, uh, which is over here, uh, you also see that it seems that this response not only is shown in the fiber optic, but also in the broadband with uh, a peak that goes between 15 and near 20 hertz. Uh, that is also shown in, in here. However, uh, the idea now is to compute also the same um, pressure rate versus strain rate amplitude in order to see if also the broadband might show this nonlinear response. Uh, another thing that we can see, for example, is that for different channels, uh, these two that are right here, the blue and the red one, uh, we're gonna find them right in this, uh, uh, right along this path of the cable in this, near this part. However, uh, the channel that is 500, um, Five, which is in yellow, we're going to find it in the other side of this fault. And so we see that actually, for example, for the channel uh, 505, we see that actually uh, the frequency in the frequency spectrum, it shows that the peak is kind of like a, it is not divided. However, for the 444, and 494, uh, the peaks actually looks divided. And you can see something similar when we see the components for one, just uh, for only one broadband, as only the vertical channel is similar to the one of 505, which is not divided. And uh, the scattered plot that you saw before, uh, this was a nice, uh, example of the nonlinear ground response. However, um, this corresponds to another fiber, which is the constellation fiber. Uh, and the one that I just showed you is a standard uh, telecom fiber. But however, the two of them are deployed in, a certain, in certain moments and we have some jumps. So now the idea is to also locate the channels uh, and interpolate, interpolate locate the channels of this uh, constellation fiber in order to know them how the nonlinearity ground response is shown um, across the area and try to compare it with the thickness of the scoria layer and the medium. And that's it. Thank you.